Hello, and welcome to my first pen review on this channel. And for my first pen review, I've decided to cover my first fountain pen, or the first fountain pen I ever got. I have a lot of fountain pens now, uh, but this is the first one that I got and sort of what got me into fountain pens. Um, I got it as um, part of a subscription box back in the day, and it came with the pen, came with the clip, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and then a package of, or a box of cartridges that came with the pen. So the pen we're talking about today is the Kaweco Sport, or Kaweco Sport, if you're official. Um, this is a good uh, beginner pen, I would say, probably not the best, I don't know about the best beginner pen, but a good beginner option, um, and, and just uh, some people really dive deep into the Kaweco Sports. Um, but this pen, um, the plastic basic version of the pen without the clip, comes in anywhere from around. You can find them between 18 and 25 US dollars at this point in time. And um, so they put them right in the, the sort of intro market. Uh, like I said, it is a plastic pen. It is a German pen made of plastic, or if you want to be fancy, you can say resin. Um, and so let's take a look at it. So this one is the black version. They come in in other colors as well for their basic one. It's Kweko Sport and sort of gilded lettering there. Um, the back sort of, uh, back in the day they used to be piston fill pins. They're not anymore, but it still has sort of that knobby sort of material um, on the back. So to pretend like it's a piston fill pin, but it also helps with uncapping the pin. This is a screw cap so a couple turns actually we can test it I believe it's about one and a quarter turn um, there you go about one and a quarter turn will uncap the pin the barrel itself is actually really small so this is a pocket pin it's it's very small you can you can see it sort of in my hand there it's you know the size of a finger basically so it's a really small pin I don't know many people that use them unposted I guess you could if you wanted to um, but I wouldn't really recommend it uh, I wouldn't use it that way uh, you have once again that plastic barrel the threads aren't very obtrusive but they're there but really no step down into the section the sections concave there just slightly you can see um, which makes for a pretty comfortable pen. I, I kind of hold my pens back a little bit, so I have one, my thumb kind of over the threads, and then my other fingers here. As I mentioned before, this is a German pen. Let me move that out of the way so it focuses. And you can see the nib there. This is just the standard steel nib, so the standard models just come with the regular German Still nib, you can see Kaveco there, and this is a medium nib, and it has some neat little scroll, scroll work there. There's your feed with the Kaveco logo um, on it there, and you can see some blue ink left in there from last time. Now, they do have other uh, options available for nibs. They have a gold nib that you can buy for a premium price. Uh, you can put that into any Kaweco pen pretty much. So if you want to put a gold nib in this pen, you can. They also now have premium steel nibs, which have kind of gotten mixed reviews. Um, so that's kind of up to you if you want to do that. But really, the regular steel nibs are, are fine in my opinion. I haven't had any problems out of this. Some people have QC problems out of Kaweco, but I've found this pen to be really reliable. Uh, if we look inside... There's nothing much. It's a really lightweight pen. You just have your feed there, some threads, nothing to note in the barrel um, there. So very lightweight. And what you usually do is you post this pen. It posts really deeply um, and makes it into a normal sized, comfortable pen. Um, it gives it a little bit more weight, a lot more length. And it makes it for a comfortable rider. On the cap itself, at the end, you have another Kaweco branding there. It's sort of conical, so it kind of comes to a point there. 
And then, like I said, I have a clip on here. Uh, this just came with, with the, the pin for me, but it is a couple dollars extra to buy a clip. But the clips come in all kinds of finishes and metals, and so you can get it to match the pin however you'd like uh, there. And it just slips on, literally slips on there. I found that they, they hold on to the plastic pins a lot better. Sometimes with the metal pins, they can kind of slip around. So you might just want to try to pinch pinch it down a little bit more. Um, on the metal pins, but uh, for me, it's been completely fine with the clip. And I found that the clip adds some weight to it as well that you kind of need for such a light pen. Um, but, yep, so that is uh, the pen itself. Like I said, it's it's a smaller pen. It's a pocket pen, easy one to throw in your pocket or a purse or a, a bag, pencil case, whatever you want to do, um, and take it with you. It is a small pen, but it's absolutely usable and, and comfortable, um, very convenient size to take with you. Now, the ways to fill it, you can fill it with a cartridge, of course. It's just a standard international cartridge, the German pen, so standard international works fine with it. Uh, or you can buy, they sell a mini push converter, uh, which I don't have one on me, um, so we'll just be using cartridges today. The other way you can fill it, of course, if you want to use bottled ink, but you don't want to fidget or buy the, the push converter, the mini push converter that goes in here, is you can just use a syringe, a blunt-end syringe, like this one here. You can take that and use that blunt-end syringe to wash out the old cartridge. So if you use a cartridge up, take it out, use this to push some water through it, wash it out, and then you can, you know, use a bottle of ink. There's just a dye mine bottle. You can suck up some ink and then put that ink and refill the cartridge with the ink of your choice if you want to do that. So that's another option too that might might save you a couple bucks or something, or some people might prefer it because uh, the cartridges probably has a higher ink capacity than the converter. But those are the options for filling. And like I mentioned, they come in a lot of different varieties. So they have... Uh, aluminum versions, the AL Sport or All Sport, uh, the brass version, the steels version, they have limited and collector versions that come in all sorts of finishes and styles and materials and stuff. So, uh, and each of those will sort of come at a premium price or a little bit more of a price, but still a very affordable pen. So, uh, but this is the one I have. It's just the standard black one as my first fountain pen. So, we might as well ink it up. As I mentioned, I'll be using just the cartridges. So here's a little package of the Quiveco small international cartridges. This is just royal blue. So we'll grab one of these. The pen itself comes with two cartridges. Um, usually it is the, the blue. Um, so it comes with two. That's one thing people might um, not know because you'll have the one that's sort of down here. They usually kind of ship it like that. And then they'll put another one and store it in the barrel um, and so some people the this will the, the cartridge will get stuck in the barrel and they'll say my pen's not closing and it's because they have a cartridge jammed in here in the barrel but if you just give it a couple taps that usually solves that problem so to ink it with the cartridge all you do is push just take your cartridge put it in the cap give it a mighty mighty push hold up it's hard to do it with the camera there we go Give it a little snap, and it'll immediately sort of start going down. Now, you can give it a couple minutes and wait for it, gravity to do its work, and just set the pin, um, you know, kind of where the nib nib is down, and wait for it. Or if you're impatient like me, uh, you can do that, but also you can give this cartridge a little bit of a squeeze. So it is just a plastic cartridge, and I'm just giving it a squeeze and watching for ink to come down the feed here. So let me see if I can get a good shot. There comes some ink. And we're just going to kind of get it going. There we go. That's about as far as I would do it, and that's pretty risky, by the way. But you can see that we got some bubbles there, which tell us that the ink is moving. So we're going to put this back together and give it a bit of a write. 
This is just the Quecos, Quecos uh, standard royal blue ink. It's a good blue ink. It's a standard German royal blue ink, just like Pelican 4001. It's nothing special. It is on the drier side, so you'll find that as well. To write on, I am just using a standard Rhodia 80 GSM dot pad. And just a word of warning, my writing is not fancy or anything like that. It's unique to me, so I like that, and I'll just write how I write, and you can take it or leave it. Uh, but here we go. So unscrew, post the pen, and get underway. Let me zoom in just a hair so you can see what I'm writing. So I'm going to start here, and we're going to hope. This pen starts running, so you might have to give it a little press to get it started, but there it goes. And we'll start a writing sample here. So today we have the Caveco Sport, just the black standard model, and the nib itself is a medium steel nib. And of course, the ink that we just saw is just the Kaveco Royal Blue. I'll just note that it's a cartridges. It's one of the cartridges. Like I said, super smooth pin. I've never had a problem with this nib or with this pin. It's very reliable. Um, Very smooth, we'll give some cross hatches. It's a still tiny still nib, so you're not gonna have a lot of flicks. Maybe we can get no. You can't really get there's sort of no pressure. A little bit of pressure just gives you kind of some more ink, but not much in terms of line variation. Maybe a little bit now that I'm looking at it. But I wouldn't sort of do that normally. I would just sort of write my normal pressure. Uh, people tend to enjoy pen grams when they're seeing a ink review, just to see it, sorry, that is going crazy, just to see it sort of write for the first time. So we'll take one of those. I'm not going to use the standard Fox one. I pref much prefer the five boxing wizards. Let me move that over so we can see it a little bit better. So the five boxing wizards jump quickly there we go as you can see the sink does have some shading if it goes on wet just a standard blue ink no sheen or anything to to think of but very smooth pen Fairly wet, even though this is a drier ink, we can give it a little bit of a smear test. So I'll do a cross hatch and just a smear. So pretty generous, considering that this is a German royal blue ink. It tends to run on the dry side for a lot of pens. Um, that's pretty generous in terms of our ink. Uh, but there you have it. Um... It's not much to say, really. It's just super reliable, easy, convenient pan to take with you wherever. I've used this at work before. Um, it, I've had it a long time, so it does age. So you can maybe see there that you can see sort of some cap marks where the cap is either posted or when you screw the cap on, that's about where the cap comes to screw on there so you can kind of see those scratches and stuff so that happens but that's normal with the pen and I don't mind that at all um, so there we have it if you'd like to see other videos or more videos like this one please make sure to like comment and subscribe those are quick and easy things that you can do to see more videos like this and see more uh, fountain pen and pen reviews in general uh, paper, stationery, letter writing, inks, um, things like that. So uh, appreciate it and uh, have a good one.